Before we begin, what we're going to talk about, Sarah, I just wanted to thank you for, uh, for so much. I don't know where to begin, actually. Thank you for, for your words to all of us this afternoon, uh, for what you do to represent the caregivers, for what you do to represent military and veterans' families, for the partnership that we have working with the Independence Fund and Operation Resiliency, and we have your team around you, and um, this is a journey that we're on together. Uh, also, acknowledge the fact that um, we have come away from the VA from 2013. Yes. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> uh, also, acknowledge we have more to do, and, and that was part of, of what um, I tried to communicate yesterday uh, in, in, in my remarks. I think when, when people contact us, um, and I, I don't know that you were here yesterday. I said, you know, we need to jump up and down. We need to, you know, recognize that and, and embrace the opportunity when a veteran or a, uh, a family member reaches us, and uh, we, we really need to celebrate that. But thank you again for what you're doing, and uh, you know, we are part of your extended family. So, all right. So, thanks. So with that. Executive Order uh, 13822, and you all know what that is, right? So, uh, just that was rhetorical. Uh, anyway, Dr. Orvis is going to uh, fill us in on the executive order, but Karen, if I can, and we're going to try and have a conversation uh, here for a few minutes. So, if this looks unscripted, it is. So, just be a bit there with us on that. But I, I also, in, in light of, of, of Sarah's uh, comments, uh, um, well, let me have. Karen, why don't you introduce it? Because I want to sure. sure, and I also, if I may, thank you again, Sarah, and thank you for the morning presentations as well. I mean, the, yeah. the impactful sessions that we've had today, it's, it's hard to follow that, and it's, yeah. I, I think it, it leaves an impact on us all. If you will continue to think about it, continue to think about what we need to do differently and better, so thank you for your story. Uh, moving into the executive order. This executive order, it was signed by President Trump back in January 2018. And it's focused on, uh, it actually charged the Department of Defense, Department of Veterans Affairs, and Department of Homeland Security to come together and ensure that we have seamless access to mental health care and suicide prevention resources for our transitioning service members and our recent veterans. And in particular, it was focusing on that first year of transition uh, after separation or retirement. And this really is, has been a wonderful opportunity for us to shore up our already collaboration, but really focus on that high-risk period of transition for our service members and our veterans. And would like to turn it to you and, and ask from your perspective, you know, what have you seen in terms of the importance of this particular EO or the work that's ongoing right now? I, I, uh, several things of uh, why this is such an important opportunity, and I think it's been a great opportunity for us to work together too, Karen. Um, but um, thinking back to, to uh, Sarah's remarks a few moments ago, I also want to, um, uh, something that I have come to appreciate and I feel I'm probably preaching to the choir here, when we talk about transition from active duty and civilian life, we're not talking about one thing. We're not talking about two things or even ten things. It's, it's as individual as the, the individual service member and family situations are. And so, you know, what, what we're trying to do through the executive order is pay attention to that time, but I, I want to assure you and uh, otherwise remind you that we really have to look at this uh, from the perspective of each individual and each individual family. But um, why this is, is so important, you know, we, we heard um, the presentations this morning and, and yesterday about um, you know, what happens when, when someone leaves uh, military and, and all of the things that change in terms of that sense of uh, belonging, the career, the daily relationships, the daily routines, the uh, support system, social networks, the financial system, all of those sorts of things, the, uh, uh, you know, going to apply for a job and not just, you know, presenting your form to your but you know, having to do a job interview and a 
your resume and all those sorts of things. So it is, it is a critical time and what we've learned in, in looking at our data, sadly, and I personally I still struggle with this, is that that first year or maybe even the first few years after transition from active duty to civilian life is a high risk time for suicide. We know that from our data. So the, the executive order uh, was a great opportunity and a reminder to all of us that we need to do more to pay attention to that time. And it's also the fact that it's no single agency. And um, um, I, I'm, I'm very happy that Karen and I are standing here together because I think sometimes uh, there's been a perception that our agencies are like, no, you handle it. You know, you handle it. No, you handle it. You know, and I think we're in this together along with the Department of Homeland Security. And so th that's another part. No single agency. But, but again, I, I, going back to Sarah's remarks, it's not just about the agencies. We need the agencies that are here. We need everyone in this, this uh, opportunity. And, and finally, that, you know, there are certain maybe subgroups of uh, veterans and service members that we have to pay special attention to. Certainly those who are catastrophically injured, uh, but women veterans in, in particular are, are a group uh, uh, that we need to look at. Or um, uh, people, um, uh, uh, we know from again from our data that that 18 to 34 year old group is the group where suicide rates are increasing the most, and so that would be another group. So, uh, Karen, I don't know if you want to add anything in terms of, of what's important or, or perhaps say about uh, some things that you've seen have changed over the yeah. last year. Yeah, maybe useful to share a little bit about how we went about accomplishing this executive order or setting this up. So, the three agencies got together and drafted a joint action plan. And the action plan has 16 initiatives, and that was approved by the White House. And currently right now we have 10 of those initiatives completed and even for the initiatives that are completed we're still collecting metrics to be able to track the impact of all the initiatives we set this up and the, the joint action plan was really based on three overarching goals so first of all we need to make sure that all transitioning service members and veterans are aware and understand the mental health resources and suicide prevention resources that are available to them we also need to make sure that we're meeting the needs of our at-risk service members and veterans. And then finally, that we're improving our mental health care and our suicide prevention services for the individuals that are identified in need and being high risk. So it really was designed to have three goals, having the universal, the selected, and the indicated strategies. The universals being for everyone, the selected being, we know individuals might be at higher risk, and then the indicated being, we know they are high risk, and what are the specific things that we're doing to try to help that, that group of individuals. In terms of things that we've accomplished thus far, out of the, we have 10 that are completed at this point, and I think they're all exciting, but we, we only have a small amount of time that we can talk about today. So I'm gonna highlight two in particular from the DOD perspective. The enhancement of the transition assistance program, and also the enhancement of Military One Source. For the Transition Assistance Program, uh, for folk, any folks that may not be aware of what it is, it provides information, tools, training, and resources to our service members as they're preparing for their next step in life. So whether that's pursuing additional education, it's seeking meaningful employment, it's wanting to start your own business, a combination of those and so many other things. And the Transition Assistance Program is actually a very robust interagency effort. It's not only Department of Defense and Veterans Affairs and Homeland Security, but it's uh, Small Business Administration, Department of Education, Department of Labor, and the Office of Personal Management. For this particular EO, we are looking to see are there things that we need to enhance with the Transition Assistance Program. And one of the items that was identified, well, first of all, we enhanced the curriculum looking specifically at the curriculum focusing on VA benefits and enhancing what are those mental health resources and care that are available in your first year post-separation or retirement and beyond. So that's a, a greater emphasis. There is also now a facilitated registration into VA healthcare as part of the curriculum to walk you through that, to have a conversation about that, and that didn't exist before. And now we also have 
in terms of identifying individuals that might be at risk or might want some additional support, we're focusing on psychosocial needs and providing warm handovers for individuals that might want to have some additional peer support. So for example, we're providing connections to Military OneSource that provides peer support, among other resources. And the, the Transition Assistance Program has a variety of supports in place already for individuals that are either identified in need or suggest that they want some additional resources. So it focuses on, for instance, if you might be at risk for homelessness or transportation needs or unemployment, uh, or you want additional support on your VA benefits. That was already built in. But what was could be enhanced in particular, and certainly there's always room to improve, but uh, is those psychosocial needs. Do you have your support networks? How do we connect you there? So that was a, a key enhancement that we had in, in the Transition Assistance Program. This is not Transition Assistance so much, or TAP, but another enhancement from the EO is there is now a mandar mandatory separation health assessment that all transitioning service members must complete no later than 180 days prior to separation or retirement. And that includes a mental health component. So that's an important step forward. And then in terms of military one source and the enhancement there, that was a result of the EO and also the National Defense Authorization Act, is military one source originally was offered to all service members and their families up to 180 days post separation or retirement. It is now available a full year after your, your transition. So to be able to use those resources. And in case folks are not aware of Military One Source and all that it has to offer, it's a 24 7 call center and website that offers a whole host of resources. And it's for all of our transitioning service members. So it's for active component, reserve, National Guard, their families, and veterans the first full year. And there are a variety of offerings. So if you need help with your taxes, that's possible. There is um, spousal employment assistance, a variety of training and education. There is um, also relocation, deployment tools, non-medical counseling. So if you're having challenges in terms of relationships, parenting challenges, or just daily life stressors, there's confidential no-cost counseling. Those are just a few examples that are available. So being able to extend that during that high risk period of transition and that full year, extra year, we see as a, a big move forward. How about you? What do you see as? Yeah, well, they, it's really the social yeah. determinants of health and well-being. Yeah, and, it is. And, then, yeah. and that, that's a wonderful thing. I, I just, um, I do want to just quickly acknowledge the changes in the transition assistance program. I think that's been great, and we've been also uh, focused on pulling in uh, other groups, faith-based organizations and veteran service organizations into that as well, and so I think that's important. But, but two other uh, quick things. Uh, also what's taking place now through the Transition Assistance Program is the opportunity for service members to pre-populate an enrollment form for VA healthcare. So that, that it's actually built into the curriculums. And so uh, that way it is, makes it much easier for veterans to uh, enroll into healthcare. It's not going to be a new or foreign process. And we actually have a call center that will call uh, the service member after they leave active duty to say, would you like to you know, hit send on that uh, enrollment form? And, and so we're trying to really lower the threshold for enrollment into healthcare. And, and something else that I think is, is novel and it's been great, we've, we've uh, actually seen people transition into uh, healthcare and mental health care through it is we now offer uh, drop-in whole health orientation groups at all of our VA uh, medical centers. I know when we started over a year ago, they were being offered twice a month at every VA. I don't quite know what the schedule is, but if you call the VA and ask for the, the whole health orientation group and when it is, uh, they'll, they'll tell you. And it's, you don't have to be registered. Any, any service member they can learn about what does whole health mean, they can learn about VA, and we've actually uh, been able to help transition people into mental health care, so I, I think that's uh, good. And uh, just, to, uh, we have a few minutes left, but um, what about what's, what's to come? So we have 10 things that are in steady state, what, where are we going with some of the other things? Yeah, and if I can, I'm going to bypass that question right. just a second and say, and I think you, you shared this already, but I really want to emphasize the point where 
while we are talking a lot about what the three agencies are doing, it, a key focus of the EO was also what are the external partnerships and awareness for our transitioning service members of those community resources and where to connect and the importance of connecting with uh, those different groups that you, that you might find a personal relationship with. So that's been a key focus too. Where we're headed, uh, just gonna highlight one of the things that's still in progress and you might have others that you wanna highlight too, uh, but we're refining the career readiness tool that's a part of the transition <coughs> assistance program right now. And it's really gonna look at trying to better capture all of those potential risks of our transitioning service members across multiple life domains. So social, relationship, employment, housing, mental health, uh, hope, sense of well-being, really get a more well-rounded picture of where there might be risks and ensure that those individuals have their needs met and have the support and the resources that they need as they're going through that transition period. So that might be peer support, might be clinical care, or a variety of other resources, but that's a, a big effort underway still. Other efforts you want to share? Yeah, there, there's, there's several, but uh, in the interest of time, I, I think one thing that I'm really excited about that I want to share is uh, starting in October, I'm looking at Matt, and maybe he knows, October, November, we're going to, one of the, the first item actually in the, the action plan, it has to do with uh, outgoing uh, calls uh, to recently transitioned service members. And we've been working with, this is a great uh, example of intra-agency partnership. We've been working with our colleagues in the Veterans Benefit Administration to stand up a call center that is going to make uh, outbound carrying contact calls. Uh, three times during that first year after separation from service. It's, it's not about benefits, it's not about enrollment, it's not about anything other than, you know, uh, how are you doing? And, and it's, it's, not a, it's not a clinical interview, so you're not gonna get the psychologist on the phone, but it's, it's, a, it's a caring, kind, outgoing contact from uh, VA saying, what can we do for you? Are you aware of the resources that we have? And we're going to make those calls. And uh, we met with the call team uh, a few weeks ago, and they have scripts that are, are, are written. And, you know, they have this whole protocol laid out where they're not just going to try your phone number, and if you don't answer, they're going to move on to the next person. I think, that, you know, they're going to try, you know, all these number of times and at different times of day. So it's, it's really, they're, they're going to, uh, pursue these people and I think again that that represents the commitment and and it's based upon the information that that DOD is providing to us it really uh, shows the commitment that we have jointly as agencies to be there to support uh, uh, service members during that important uh, first year after transition but there, there are a few other things to come but I think we're are we out of time uh, yes uh, we are so uh, I'm looking at our, our, our queue so Karen, I'll let you close us out here if you have any, any last minute comments. Sure. So. Just that I think this is a, a great example of our partnership and not only in terms of how we're working with our three departments, but the community stakeholders to really ensure that we're continuously improving that support, the resources for our transitioning service members and veterans. And there's always more work to do. Uh, and I think we're looking to do it together and to do it with you all as well in terms of the community. So appreciate Appreciate you all being here today, and if you have additional thoughts, questions on the executive orders, either one of us would be happy to talk about it, and you certainly could stop over to our resource uh, tables right. as well to learn more. And, and we do uh, have one other thing, I guess I'll say, uh, heads up for tomorrow, uh, Dr. Barbara Van Dalen is here, who is going to talk to us about the executive order that was signed uh, this year. Uh, standing up the Prevents Task Force. So there's a second executive order, and there's more to come in this space tomorrow. So <clears throat> please uh, make sure you're here and attentive tomorrow morning, and we look forward to Barbara's presentation. Thank you. Thank you.